Welcome to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. This podcast is for NP students studying to pass their NP certification exam. Getting to the correct test answers means breaking down the exam questions themselves. Leading NP expert, Dr. Margaret Fitzgerald, shares her knowledge and experience to help you dissect the anatomy of a test question so you can better understand how to arrive at the correct test answer. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. Josh is a well 16-year-old male who presents reporting a four-day history of moderate left-sided otalgia with intermittent fever. Clinical assessment is consistent with acute otitis media. No drug allergy or recent antimicrobial use is reported, particularly within the last month. Which of the following represents the most appropriate first-line antimicrobial therapy? Would it be A, oral moxifloxacin, B, oral amoxicillin, C, oral trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, D, oral azithromycin. Where do you start? First, of course, determine what kind of a question this is. We're told the diagnosis, acute otitis media, and we're prompted to prescribe an antimicrobial. This is a plan slash intervention question. What are the key components in the history here? Here are some of the key components. No drug allergies are reported. Therefore, what we can do is prescribe any antimicrobial that's consistent with evidence-based practice. Next, no recent antimicrobial use, therefore significantly limits the risk of infection with a resistant pathogen. And please keep in mind, most outpatient infections are the result of non-resistant organisms. We have acute otitis media in a teen or adult without chronic health problems. We're told he's well. If a question says the patient is well, they're well. Leave it be. They don't have any hidden significant health problems. Therefore, we don't need to think about second or third line antimicrobial therapies. And with the choice of an antimicrobial, regardless of what kind of disease the pathogen is causing, knowledge of the causative organism is key. Another way of putting this, and in order to know which drug to pick in any infectious disease, you need to know the causative buck. The primary treatment target in acute otitis media is one of three organisms. Streptococcus pneumoniae, which will be usually the most common, a gram-positive organism, as well as two gram-negative organisms, Haemophilus influenzae and Moraxella catarralis. I want to point out to you, these are also the causative organisms in acute bacterial rhinosinusitis and with COPD exacerbation when bacterial contribution is the trigger. As a result, you're going to see similar antimicrobials are recommended in all of these diseases. And what I often will hear from people getting ready for their NP boards is they'll say, I struggle so much with antimicrobial choices. What I would encourage you to do, learn the bugs, then see what bugs are eradicated by what drugs. And the same bugs come up over and over and over again, which is why the same drugs come up over and over again. Clinical recommendations for antimicrobial therapies and acute otitis media, based on the recommendations of the Sanford Guide, a helpful clinical reference that reflects evidence-based practice, highlights the use of the following antimicrobials. A, oral moxifloxacin. This is a respiratory fluoroquinolone. How could I tell it's a fluoroquinolone? It has the floxacin suffix on it. All the fluoroquinolones do. This drug is typically only used in acute otitis media when there is significant risk for resistant organism, 
such as the person who recently, particularly within the past month, took a systemic antimicrobial. B, oral amoxicillin. This is actually the correct answer. The reasons for this are many, including great activity against strep pneumo, the most likely causative organism, when given in a sufficient dose. In many strains of Haemophilus influenzae, particularly those that do not produce beta-lactamase. Another part of this is when acute otitis media is caused by H. flu and MCAT, it usually resolves without antimicrobial even being taken. So that is another way of saying our true treatment target with acute otitis media is strep pneumo. Give enough of a dose of oral amoxicillin, $4 drug, very well tolerated. This young man has no notation of antibiotic allergy, penicillin allergy. We're good to go with this very well tolerated, inexpensive medication. But let's take a look at the rest of the options. C, oral trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. That is brand name Bactrim. And if I was to roll the clock back 15, 20 years ago, I would be saying, well, that's a possibility we're going to use that medication. But this is now. And what I'm going to tell you is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is no longer considered to be an acceptable choice of antimicrobial therapy in acute otitis media. And for that matter, in acute bacterial rhinosinusitis in any age group because of the high rate of treatment failure with the three major causative organisms. Option D, oral azithromycin. And what I have to say is, sadly, due to overuse, azithromycin's activity against streptococcus pneumoniae is waning. And this is an antimicrobial that's only been on the market for about 25 years. And unfortunately, this degree of resistance developed rather quickly because azithromycin, aka Azithromax, has been handed out, unfortunately, indiscriminately by many healthcare providers when it was not needed. And its use in acute otitis media and ABRS is no longer advocated even with penicillin allergy, its activity against the acute otitis media gram-negative organisms does remain intact. But given strep pneumo is truly our treatment target, its use is not recommended in acute otitis media or acute bacterial rhinosinusitis. Key takeaway, to choose the drug, you must know the bug. Watch for patterns in the selection of antimicrobials, particularly in the treatment of bacterial respiratory tract infections. Anticipate on boards that you are going to be asked about first-line antimicrobial therapy in an individual suitable for outpatient treatment. Thank you for listening to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. And for more NP resources, visit FHEA.com.